Welcome everyone to the second day of the FutureWorks Tech Conference. This is our first session today and we're glad you're joining us. Before starting, we want to thank our sponsor for today, the JavaScript Day, OLC Group. We also want to thank all the other sponsors, especially AutoVision and Volkswagen AG Group IT that will be speaking now. And without further ado, I want to welcome Oliver Schnell on stage, Employee Experience and Culture Manager, Digital Lab Berlin at Volkswagen AG Group IT. He will be sharing how he hacked the company with happiness. Oliver, the stage is yours. Good morning, everybody. Really happy to be here with you. Uh, and uh, together with my colleague Ole Reus from Hanover. Uh, thanks, Joao, for the short intro. Um, maybe I can say a few words about myself uh, to give you some more insights. Uh, so as Joao mentioned, I'm Employee Experience and Culture Manager at the Digital Lab in Berlin that belongs to Volkswagen. But before my current role, I was actually working for many years as a software engineer, not only in the automotive field, but for many different areas like airline, banking, and all sorts of company. And I'm yeah really happy to talk about how we actually develop software at the Volkswagen Group. And while doing so, how we were able to hack the company with happiness. And yeah, I would like to hand over to my colleague, Ole. Ole, yeah, I hand over. Thanks, Ole. That was the best part because now is the downer because I'm just a dude. Uh, I was a TV producer and a TV director before and accidentally Volkswagen hired me for doing a job. They don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Ambassador, that was four years ago. Then we found out and uh, now I'm uh, accidentally um, office director from the SDC Hanover, the software development center. It's pretty much the same. We explain the difference uh, to the digital lab right now. Um, yeah. And, uh, I hope we, we can give you some insights. We don't want to make a marketing talk. We just want to tell you the, the real stuff, what we do, because for me, it's the best place I've ever worked in. And that's very honest. Um, who knows me knows that I'm honest with that. And we hack the company with happiness means. Uh, we do some things different, and this is what we want to present you today. And Oli, if you go to the next page, I think we just start exp explaining you where we started with that. Um, you know, Volkswagen was in a big transformation from a car manufacturer. Everyone knows Volkswagen cars, but nobody knows all the stuff, all the tech stuff. And we have to transform to a real tech company, and this is one of the biggest challenge challenges for me and one of the thrilling challenges what I can imagine. And so we started uh, a couple of years ago starting different labs because we knew from the beginning that one lab is not enough maybe just in Wolfsburg in Germany. So uh, they were focused on, on, on stuff like uh, quantum computing in San Francisco, like uh, the data lab in Munich um, and uh, a lot of stuff, smart factory. It's very important to connect all the plans. This is a big project, what we do in the STCs as well. Um, but we focused on software development to start a digital lab in Berlin because we don't know really in Volkswagen how to develop software in a modern way, lean startup, extreme programming. We have nothing to do with that before. We gave it to third party companies, what is totally fine, but there is some stuff in the, in the future what we have to take care about, what is very sensitive and what is maybe a game changer. So in the digital lab Berlin, we started to ex yeah, to explore how uh, to develop a software in a modern way. Oli will explain it later. Uh, so I will focus on the introduction of the STC family right now. Oli, if you go to the next page, please. Um, this is right now where we are. So from the Digital Lab in Berlin, we started uh, five years ago because of we doing DevOps, we knew that uh, there's a couple of products we can do in the digital lab, but in the future we have to we have to start another SDC and we start another SDC, another SDC worldwide. And this is where we are right now. We're in Berlin with two SDCs, the digital lab and the SDC for the brand Volkswagen, because Volkswagen is big and we belong to the group IT, but we have 13 brands, you know, in Volkswagen. So we can develop for everyone and we can see where uh, parallel development is taking place, what is a big advantage. 
Uh, there's now an IoT SDC in Dresden. Um, uh, Dresden is a, is a absolutely a, a high tech uh, a spot in Germany for IoT and for um, for uh, artificial intelligence. Very important. Um, we have, uh, of course, two SDCs in Wolfsburg, in Hanover right now. This is my SDC. We have uh, one in Ingolstadt, in Barcelona, in Lisbon, beautiful Lisbon. I love the lab in Lisbon or the SDC in Lisbon. We have one in Delhi, one in Pune, and this is not the end. And you see some different types. What means I start with type three. This is what Oliver and I uh, um, are working in. Type three means we do extreme programming, um, um, pair programming, test-driven development. We do DevOps, the whole package. We do it very serious, but um, it's not for everyone. And we want to have all the talents from the market uh, working with us for the future of mobility. So we found it also type two, what means we work agile, but we can have part-time work or remote work or stuff beside that XP experience. And we do type one. That means we hire third party companies or external teams, but they are working with us in our methodology like we want to do it in the future. This is just the short overview about that. And I like to hand over to Oliver to explain all the stuff, what we are doing, why we are doing, and we see us each other in the end. Awesome. Thanks, Ole, for this nice overview about yeah the bigger context, the big landscape in the Volkswagen IT world, actually globally, we, we need to say now even. And I would like to take you on a journey now and maybe dive into it a little bit deeper and talk about like how we actually do this in the teams, in, in, the, in, in each location that we have. And yeah, let's, let's start talking about our team setups in particular. Um, on this picture here, you can see three people. One of them maybe looks familiar to me. That, that's my face on there. That's, that's not so important though. Um, what is important here? The number of three, because this is quite important. We have, um, for every team, one product. So every team is responsible for one product. And, um, in each, of those product teams, we have three roles working on the products. And I wanna talk a little bit more about those three roles now. Um, you probably are not surprised to see those three roles here. We have the software engineers, the product designers, and the product managers. Since we probably have like many software engineers in the audience, I'm trying to talk a little bit more about the software engineers uh, today. But also I want to um, mention the other roles to give you like a good picture. So what do the software engineers do? Well, actually the software engineers at our locations are responsible, I always say, for the whole software life cycle, you could say. So starting with the early architectural ideas of a potential minimal viable product, we would be also in charge taking care of a good quality by providing proper tests. We would be also the ones bringing things live in, produ in production. So we would do the operations part of it. And yeah, what else? We do, we do maintenance, of course, right? If there are some bugs, we would be the ones fixing them. So we have everything in our hands, so to say. We would consider us as DevOps um, plus, and that's maybe quite special. We don't have dedicated engineers for certain areas, meaning if you work in a product team um, where the product consists of a mobile app, of a front end, and of a back end, very extreme case, you would be working on all three components at the same time. Probably not exactly at the same time, but maybe today you work on a mobile app, tomorrow you would work on a front end. So it's quite cool because you have technological wise quite like a nice poppery of, of, of different stacks in your hands. And on top of that, it is our uh, freedom as software engineers in our offices to decide what technology fits best um, for the product that we are developing. And um, we don't have any hierarchies within a team. 
So let's say you have seen a really cool framework maybe today on a conference. Um, it's quite common that you would maybe pitch it in a team. And if the team thinks it's a good idea to move to another framework, you are able to do so. No, no one will hold you back doing so. So it's a quite interesting um, environment that we actually work in. Ole mentioned before that we do pair programming and test-driven development. I will uh, talk a little bit more in detail about this later, but this is also a very important uh, fundamental of, of our daily works um, at, at our offices. So besides the software engineers, we have um, product designers and they are really awesome because they have skill sets in two big disciplines, I would say. So one discipline is that they have usually um, quite strong skills in user research. So they would be the ones who would go to our users, talk to them, understand their pains, their needs. Plus, they have this second power skill to then come up with really cool solutions that solve their needs and pains. And um, for example, they would typically come up with a nice UI designs um, that give us a nice idea of how a product may look like in future. So I, they are actually the ones who mostly drive like uh, new uh, features, for example, in our products. And then we have, um, last but not least, the product managers. And the product managers, they have a manager in the title, but um, so that you are not confused, I want to clarify this, they don't manage the team. They are not something like a team lead, but they manage the product from a business perspective. So they would be typically the ones who balance, for example, our corporate needs um, with our user needs that typically come from the designers. And they would be the ones who keep the focus in the team, who probably would um, take care of um, prioritization of our backlog items so that we really make sure as a team together to work on the most important things first. And um, that means also we do decisions together as a team, because as I said, we have those three roles and all those roles have different skill sets, um, different backgrounds. And we believe that it's really important that we do decisions together in collaboration, because let's be honest, none of those roles would be able to probably deliver uh, the product successfully without the others. Um, that's why we call it a balanced team because we balance out together all important decisions and we share product responsibility and, and ownership together as a team, which is amazing, I feel. And um, which of course means that we have quite some discussions, conversations in the team we have quite different uh, people, diverse people in the teams. And uh, I think this is our little secret that we have that um, basically is the essence uh, of building uh, really nice products that, that fit every user's need or many users' needs. Um, one thing that I wanna add is that each of the role um, is following up on some framework or some methodology. Uh, Ole mentioned already that we as software engineers work um, um, or follow extreme programming practices and pair programming test-driven development are, for example, also some parts that come with extreme programming. Um, then we have the product designers who follow user-centered design, as you probably would have guessed because Everything is very much user-centered, what we do. For us, it's very important that we constantly bring in user feedback into our product. And yeah, last but not least, the product manager, they are following lead startup methodologies. Um, I just talked about those three roles. To be honest, that's not all that we need to bring 
productive um, software to the market. This is sort of the core team, I would call it. But besides the core team, we have one more important role that I want to talk about quickly, which is the product owner. Um, product owners in our context, they are the ones that are not part of the core team. They work with the team and uh, are very much um, yeah, well connected in the corporate. They would be the ones that, for example, tackle all processes that a big corporate goes through when going live. For example, they would take care that we have um, all um, legal requirements fulfilled, that we did proper testing um, and, and they would maybe make sure that all um, security tests were done correctly. They would take care of budget, for example, but they are also sorts of our spokesmen about the product in the big corporate landscape. For example, they have, for example, the network with other brands. Ole mentioned we are part of the Volkswagen Group. We have man many brands. Uh, let's imagine we work on a mobile application that we started initially for the Volkswagen brand. Then maybe the product owners would be the ones to talk to also the other brands and see if whether they would be also interested in our solution. So all together, we are then um, yeah, able to build products in a quite lean way as, as you see. So we don't have any QA engineers or dedicated operations engineers or architects or uh, potential other roles you could think of, but this core team plus the product owners they are the ones uh, making sure that we build, pro uh, build awesome products in our company. So how does that actually look like on a daily base? I want to give you some ideas about a typical week in the lab. Um, this week, however, looks quite packed. And that is why, because I put all potential rituals and uh, ceremonies in one week, which is never happening in real life. But just to give you an idea about what we typically do during the week, actually in real life, if you're a software engineer, the, your week is typically quite free of appointments, which is awesome because, um, yeah, if I recall my experience from my last companies, once you are there for a while, usually appointments pile up and pile up and uh, you have barely time to focus on the product work. And that is not the case in our offices because we usually have a lot of time dedicated to focus on the product development, which is, which is really amazing, I think. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about the few rituals that we have during the week. And um, as I said, this is like a typical timetable that is not only um, present in, in, in Berlin where I work, but that would be probably also be the case in Hanover where Ole is or maybe in Lisbon um, in, in, in Portugal where also we have an SDC. So we typically start every morning with a big office stand up. So the whole office comes together and we would basically share information that is relevant to everybody in the office. For example, we would say, uh, we would uh, tell everybody about new joiners or for example, we would talk about interesting meetups in a city. So I'm sure that for example, in the Lisbon SDC, uh, the Future Works Tech Conference was announced today. And um, yeah, this is, uh, that are typical topics of the stand-up. It's quite short, rather five minutes. Then we have a team stand up. So everybody goes to their team and we have actually three main topics that we discussed there. What problems we were facing yesterday, then what we want to do today and who works with who. We mentioned we do pair programming and that's why this question is always quite important in the, in the morning. Um, but this also takes not much time so usually the team stand up is also done in five maybe if it's a long one 10 minutes and then on mondays we usually have a so-called iterative planning meeting 
for people who know Scrum, it's a little bit like the sprint planning meeting where we basically have a look, uh, have a look into our backlog, make sure that we have enough great written user stories that we can work on during the week. And um, it is prepared beforehand very well by the product own, uh, by the product managers, this meeting. So this is typically also quite fast, maximum one hour. We have once in a while uh, a format called Magical Monday, maybe once a month roughly. And this is a format where we want to share knowledge. Maybe someone was on a conference, heard about interesting topics. That would be then really nice to talk in a magical Monday about it so that all teammates in the whole office know about. Then we have often Tuesdays or Wednesdays design reviews. That's a super cool uh, format, I have to say. I didn't knew that before I joined the office. A design review is a format that is done by the designers. And basically what the designers uh, do is they, they present their ideas and pitches. They would build wireframes and they would basically present how they envision yeah, new features, for example, for the product. And the whole team is there. So everybody can, can give their opinion about it. And for example, the software engineers can say, hey, if we do it this way, that might be quite complicated on a technical perspective to do it. And um, yeah, also the, the, of course, the product managers can, can give their insights from a business perspective. And um, it's very, very cool, this, those meetings, because yeah, everybody can contribute and it's a very efficient way to align the whole team of how we envision future um, potential features of the product. And then we have once or bi-weekly a product check-in. This is a meeting where each team basically uh, has some minutes, maybe half an hour, roughly, sometimes less with our office director. And um, to make it clear, it's not like a status report or something, but it's rather a meeting where, um, yeah, we can let our office directors know what problems we are may facing in the teams, how the mood is, and if we need help by the office director, that would be like a great um, place where we can talk about it. We have, apart from the product check-ins, um, yeah, every sometimes every week, it depends how many topics we have, but once in a while we have lunch and learns during our lunch break where um, we have either internal speakers or external speakers who talk about any topic. Um, and when I mean any topic, I really mean it. I have the super cool lunch and learn in my mind where, for example, uh, one of our colleagues talked about his career as a marathon runner and uh, how he got there. And it's a nice, um, format to yeah share knowledge and get together have food together and yeah we we do it quite frequently then we have office things it's um, the only occasion where the whole the whole lab comes together beside the office stand up in the morning it's rather also a short meeting maybe 15ish 20 minutes depending on how many topics we have that would be the one one meeting in the in a week where we share all info that, that are relevant, that maybe needs some more explanation. For example, if we start a new product development and uh, things like that. Then we have pre-IPMs where we basically prepare the backlog for the next week and we prepare the IPM that I um, explained earlier. And as a last potential meeting during the week, and actually this one we have every week because for us it's quite important. We, we do retrospectives at the very last thing in the week. So I talked already about the fact that we do pair programming and I want to go a little bit more in depth um, and, 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 and share a little bit more experience about that topic because I feel Many software engineers have tried it out somewhat, 
but probably not uh, have been working the whole day in this in this methodology. And I want to give you some insights of how we do it in our offices. And here you see a picture that explains it already a little bit. Um, for example, we have here in, in, in the front of the picture two of our colleagues who have both a display and they share their screens. So everybody has a keyboard, their own mice, the, um, their own mouse, and the display content is mirrored. So if my colleague Sham on the right side would grab now the keyboard and type, and Ivan on the left side, uh, our other colleague would do it at the same time, they would really have like some funny code. So you really need to talk a lot about your thoughts what you want to do and yeah it's it's all about communication in a team and um, of course there are different ways of doing that one quite common practice that we like to do often is called ping pong and in the ping pong way what we do is Ole mentioned earlier we do test driven development that means we always would write a test first before the implementation and one common pattern that we follow is that for example Ivan starts with a test and then Sam would basically implement um, the feature and then Ivan writes the test again and Sam would do the implementation and then maybe we would switch roles and like this I have to say you really have in the end a very high code quality because it's not that someone only reviews your code that you wrote, but you really develop the code together as a team. And if you then imagine that not only those two people work together the whole time, but they would also swap their pairs, maybe every day, every second day, then you have a really cool knowledge sharing in the team and it, it's it's not a problem if you decide to go on vacation maybe on monday because there will be always at least one person who can jump in who knows what you uh, left on friday and um, it's also very much focused um the work because um you have always someone who says hey actually we wanted to do this today and to bring back the focus to the to the real task it's really great. Um, I want to be really honest, when, when I started in the office, I wasn't sure if this is uh, the methodology I would enjoy working in, because also the first weeks, it's quite common that people are very much exhausted, because it is fun, yes, but it's also very exhausting to work in that methodology, because usually you are not used to talk so much and to discuss every technical detail. And you really, if you, if you Google something that you don't know, your colleague will see that you Google, so you do it together. It's something that you need to get used to. And it takes usually, yeah, two months until, until you are really familiar with that methodology. And looking back now, I have to say it, 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 it is amazing to to uh to do pair programming because you will never be alone you always have a colleague with you and uh, as i mentioned earlier the code quality is very very different yeah this is pair programming uh something that i want to add there it's not only that we as software engineers follow um, pair programming but also our product managers and our designers often do pair together. So it's a concept that we have in the whole office, so to say. Um, one last thing that I wanna mention be before I hand over to Ole is our recruitment process. Because I think, and I worked a lot in the recruiting area in the last year, or actually the last two years, I think this is one reason why we hacked the com company with happiness because unlike other big companies, it's not, for example, a management decision if someone joins our company, 
but we make the decision in the teams. And um, I think this is really super cool setup because like this, we make sure that people who join actually have the skills needed and really fit into our culture, fit into our teams. And um, like this, we make sure that we have an, a happy environment where everybody loves to work in. And um, yeah, we, we actually, to give you some idea how we actually do it, we have for every role, a three-step process established where we really get to know the people. And of course, the other way around, because it's always like a bi-directional thing, right? So also our candidates get to know us um, get to know our products, the technologies. And at the end, the last step of our process is always a whole day working with us where we um, make sure that all of our candidates meet different teams also and different products and get a really good idea before signing any contracts, what they can expect and how a potential life, uh, how a potential work day actually looks like at our offices. Um, yeah, this is a um, really interesting topic. Um, by the way, um, we have Michael here also in this chat who is taking care of recruitment from AutoVision. So if anybody has some very particular question, feel free. He will be also in the on the session table of the session. So just reach out to him, but I think we will also have some time later to talk about your questions in the QA session. But before that, I would like to hand over to Ole again. Thanks, Oliver. Thanks for the share. Yeah, I just want to talk about one serious uh, topic with you, and this is culture. And, you know, we are from a, from a corporate. We are from one of the largest car manufacturer in the world. And culture is not given and if you think about volkswagen normally you look at the left picture yeah this is a plant in wolfsburg it's very impressive if i was there the first time in the plant and stuff it was stunning for me but you know it's it's a company with very old rules and processes and stuff and our transformation to um, a tech company is not you know with this it's it's really hard work and um, what drives us is uh, the passion to do that and to find the right people. And um, we have to prove that, to be honest. We, we know that people are not really th thrilled right now to say, hey, yeah, let's go to Fox when we change the world. We do lean startup and stuff. We have to prove that we really do that. And um, Ollie and me, we are, we are standing here um, uh, to be very honest on that and uh, that uh, we live that in our teams and we try to find the right people to help us with that. And this is very important because uh, one of the biggest transformations for Volkswagen is uh, that people are not uh, just thrilled to join Volkswagen. We have to go out to the people and we have to say, hey, come to us, help us with, with your skills. And uh, we believe in that methodologies. We believe in our in our culture, and I think we prove it every day. Uh, the people in Hanover, for example, I, I wrote it in the chat in Berlin. We are twenty eight nations um, uh, in the digital lab, and this is really for me the biggest privilege when I joined the company. And in Hanover, I I, I went to Hanover, and Hanover is not the big city like Berlin, Lisbon, Barcelona. It's, it's, it's hard, but what we do is we do a lot of community events to get in touch with the people, to, to, to create a network and to learn a lot. And um, this is very important to us culture-wise. Um, if you are in a company like Volkswagen, uh, diversity is a buzzword, but um, you know, what is diversity in that case? Is it like uh, gender diversity? Is it about we need more women in tech? Uh, this is sometimes the, the, the quality of the discussion, uh, but now we, we changed a lot. You know, we changed a lot for for um, yeah for LGBTIQ interests, for being real diverse and being real colorful and and live that. You know, just don't talk about that. But we need people like you to help us with that to be colorful. And this is why we start all that SDCs with, with a lot of power and a lot of energy um, to transform 
all that, you know, to start with our methodology, to bring it into the plant, to talk to the factory worker. We are not code monkeys. We just do UCD. Um, and for example, the new ID3, the electric car, the first electric car for Volkswagen, uh, all electric car is user centered designed. So they ask the people right now what they want, what their problem is and stuff. And this is so important for us to do that too. We never develop software what makes no sense. And this is a big step in Volkswagen. And this is a big step for all car manufacturers. So right now I, I, I just can speak out and say, come to us and, and try to try to find out with us if this is the right place. And there are a lot of places in Volkswagen. We are searching for so much people. Michael, you know that. I, I don't know if you're in the session right now. You know how, how many people we are, we are searching and AutoVision is helping us uh, in a great way to do that. Um, and yeah, I, I, I just like to, I, I just like to give you my hand on this, that, uh, everything what we tell today, we do that and we do that every day and we need you to help us. And I think with that, Oli, um, if you, if you like Michael, I don't know if you're in the session, you want to uh, tell something about AutoVision, about your entity and your team, your great team, like, uh, Anna and Julia who are working with us, um, what you do and what you maybe can offer here. Yes, uh, finally I solved my uh, technical issues and I uh, could join the session. That's <laughs> it was quite a challenge today uh, as I'm in Munich, so not in my office, uh, but finally it's solved. So thank you very much uh, that I can join your session uh, and great speeches of both of you. I think it's exactly how I learned uh, your teams as well. Uh, so the culture, the spirit is completely different from what we, what we are used usually in other teams outside of uh, Software Development Center and DigiLab and it's unique and uh, we are part of it and we are very happy that we can support you um, already since more than I think almost uh, three years uh, together to create those teams to be part of the recruitment process and as you've seen in the chat uh, you already mentioned Anna is one of the uh, great people in my team who takes care that uh, the recruitment process, the onboarding process and all of it exactly um, is working hand in hand. So it's more a partnership, uh, how we can support here directly the entrance uh, to the huge world of Volkswagen, which can be a long story and a long process. But over the years, over the past years, Anna and Julia, who's not there today, she, she has, uh, she's out of the office today. I'm sorry for that. Um, so these are the two girls at the, actually, together with Michaela Müller, who is the team lead, um, who, is, who are really in charge of all the question and answers. Uh, you, you mentioned the session afterwards uh, and the focals, uh, counterparts for, for all, everything. I think they take care about uh, your needs, that they, they answer your questions uh, during the process. Um, they support uh, while we have the assessments uh, and really figure out together with, with, uh, with you um, does it match? Is it a match with the team? Is it the match with the culture? Um, already in the first steps. So uh, finally, when we go directly then to the onboard, quite familiar that we have already found quite good candidates uh, who are really interested in supporting those. Uh, Ola mentioned and Oliver as well. Um, it's not that uh, we we are. Happy that we have an incredibly high amount of uh, candidates all the time. No, we really apply, we are applying for you, actually. Uh, it's a little bit different story because we are interested in having the best team and the best culture to finally uh, develop the best products. So, um, yeah, happy to be part of it, uh, actually. And um, I mentioned in the chat already, so we are a kind of bypass uh, how we can support you to join and uh, pretty fast those teams uh, and to support exactly uh, the product development itself. Um, so, uh, well, we are working so well together and it's just the entrance that we are offering here to work together um, and of course to, to be part of the team uh, as quickly as possible, not um, that it takes too long as sometimes such a huge OEM um, takes quite a long time to have a the full recruitment process done. It's here we have also a quite very um, good team, how we can uh, work together with the recruitment centers and additionally with you guys directly on board and have the right impact and can ask the right technical questions sometimes as well 
as uh, as also the soft skills. So um, uh, please take the opportunity and talk to Anna. Um, yeah, she had also difficulties with the IT today. Otherwise, she would be also pre uh, prepared to to join the sessions. Um, and uh, yeah, try to figure out how uh, ideally you can uh, offer us the information that we need to give you the right answers and to join the process uh, to become part of the these great opportunities that are there. And uh, we have we have a lot of opportunities for the future. You already mentioned Ola that we are planning to grow quite fast. Um, uh, so uh, we had a, a, this conversation together with. Um, Joachim a couple of days ago, where he also said, yeah, well, uh, it's just the beginning at the moment. We are thinking about 40 to 50 hirings next year. Yeah. Uh, this will be quite a huge challenge. And um, so anyway, as I said, uh, please feel free and get in touch with us. And I have to excuse again myself, not that I was late, it was already quite um, annoying, but I have to leave as well because my train is going in a couple of minutes here from Munich. Um, so feel free, happy to contact you. I will also uh, be available for, for further contacts uh, for you. So um, we will try to manage all your questions as soon as possible. Michael, thanks a lot and catch your train and uh, stay healthy. <laughs> That's very important uh, in the train yeah, as well. Sure. So thanks for your info as well. And I can, I can underline that it's a great partnership to do that together. Uh, also, Anna is in the chat right now. My heart was for Anna. So Anna, this was for you because the work with AutoVision is, is, is really great. And I saw some, some things in the chat, Oli, maybe we can answer that because yes. now we, we are, it was very important for us, and we talked to Joao and uh, Pedro about that. We want to answer your questions. We want to get in touch with you about your feelings, about your thoughts. I just answered something in the chat in parallel. There was one question over and over again, if Germany is, is, is important, and I can tell you, we normally we don't speak German in the in the SDCs and apps because we are, you know, we are from so many nations and, and German is not a real thing. Sometimes if you have the stakeholder management, to be honest, if you have products like what we have right now in Hanover about uh, security and plans, yes, you have to do with people who are not so cool with English, um, with German, uh, English, no, <laughs> sorry, now I mix it up, but we will find a way for that. So uh, in the hiring process, in the assessment, Oli can, I think, can underline that it's it's definitely in English. Everything is in English and uh, we, we don't we don't need just German native speaking people. And sometimes, you know, we just need people with Spanish uh, expertise and stuff if we develop for the Spanish market in Barcelona and Sierra Code. But this is not so on focus. So don't have that in your in your brain that you need German and stuff. It's nice. A lot of people learn German and I, I really like that because it's part of my culture. I'm, I'm, I'm from Germany, but we also learn different languages. And I also learn a lot from people of, of India, of Norway, of everywhere around the world. So don't block yourself with that. No problem. The second thing, Oli, goes to you about uh, the frameworks and technology we are working with. Um, could you tell something about that? Um, that was referring to the technologies, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. So as I said, um, in our locations, it's more that the team decide over technology. So it's hard to say, this is the tech stack that we overall use because it can change from day to day, right? Um, to give you maybe a rough understanding what I see currently a lot in the teams is that, for example, for backend topics, we use a lot Kotlin with Spring, we use Go language quite a lot. We use also some Python, um, some Scala I saw, uh, also some Node, Node.js is definitely a topic. For front end, we use quite a lot React.js and Angular as well. Um, and for mobile applications, I saw also quite some different technologies. I saw, saw native apps like Kotlin for Android and uh, Swift for iOS, but I also saw those cool fancy new frameworks like Flutter, for example. So it really depends on the team, but this is like a lot of some of the technologies I saw recently a lot, let's say. Um, we have a question from Tabo about um, if we take people from uh, uh, different countries and Tabo, yeah, of course, we need people from different countries because, you know, if you come from a different country, you have different uh, uh, sites and if you're a different insight and different. 
Sorry, Ola. I can't hear you anymore. I'm not sure if the others can hear Ola still. Jean, can you? No, I think he lost connection. Okay, so maybe I can, I can finish uh, uh, the sentence of Ola. So yes, we are definitely open to hire f from the whole world. And we already did, like as Ola mentioned, we have many, many nationalities. If we talk about the digital lab in Berlin, there are like more than I think 20 nationalities from all over the world. And personally, I love to, uh, even have the next nationality in our lab because that makes it a very diverse place and uh, so yeah that's uh, not a problem at all um, also visa wise uh, we can support you if needed i'm not sure if Ole is back if he's not hearing us anymore joao could you help me with the questions because i, I unfortunately don't see the questions I'll give you one of the questions right now. Uh, do you have people working remotely? If so, how does the pair programming work? Or better, how do you all keep in touch during the week? I know that you already answered the second part, but the first part is, is relevant. Yeah, it's a really interesting question. So before COVID started, we were always working on site, to be honest, because we also believed in the concept that it's quite important to be close together and be able to yeah communicate on a daily basis in, in person with each other and then from one day to the other we went to 100 percent home office so i myself i'm working from home office uh, since march now and we haven't really discussed in details like how we want to continue working next year but i think there will be something like a hybrid way at least where it will be probably possible to do home office once in a while, but probably we will be also working at the same time on site. Sorry, and I was wrong. My connection was gone. I'm back now. I, I try to help out there. We are already with the next question, Ole. We talk about um, working remotely now. Uh, one, one second question uh, that came with it was what tools we use? Um, well, for the pair programming, it wasn't so harmful as we thought because we use the tool used together, which allows you to pair program remotely very well because the screen is also shared, the audio is shared, so it's really smooth. And then, yeah, for example, in Berlin, we use the Google uh, suite for communication. So we do a lot of Google Meets to um, yeah, sync with the team. And I think we did very well. So although we haven't had a lot of experience in working remotely, I think we did this year very but well. But Oli, uh, in addition to that, because this is a, a topic in our team right now, uh, yes, it works very well. And I wonder how good it works, to be honest. But there is something lost <coughs> culture-wise and some and now, office, now you, are no, you are definitely, do you hear me? Yes, uh, no. Um, you're you're def uh, uh, definitely uh, are very close together. But as a product manager or as a designer, sometimes in a remote times, you are a bit disconnected from the devs because they pair all day. And this is what we found out. And we asked the people, do you want to uh, work 100% remote? And there was one out of 20 who said, yes, I can imagine that. But also this, I can imagine that we will found a completely remote SDC in the future to experience that. So we believe in Hanover and I think in Berlin too, that an office is also very important. Hybrid work will be the solution for, for the future. Fully remote for myself, I can't imagine uh, to do that. And yeah, so we have to learn from this. And this is a very challenging time for everyone. Exactly. Joao, are there any more questions in the chat? There are. Um, for example, do you assist in work visa permits? Yes, we do. So. Um, especially AutoVision, our partner, they do a great job in um, making sure to get the visa on time. Uh, it's of course a quite bureaucratic <laughs> process to apply for it, but yeah, no worries. Like you will, you will be supported in this. Perfect, perfect. I have one more. Do you want to hear? It? <coughs> can, sure, a can a oh. software automation engineer who has closely worked with developers and product owners? following agile methodology, get a chance for a job here. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <For sure. laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, we don't close 
different people. It's all about skill. And to be honest, we don't look so much in the university and master and stuff degree. We just want to know what the people can do, what, what the skills are, you know? It's something about salary, to be honest. You know, if you have a master, you are, it's easier to give you in a, in a other salary group and stuff. But, um, you know, for us, it's, we have, we have someone who is, 49 right now on our team as developer and we have someone who is 19 you know and they pair together because you know they have a great skill set and this is not this is not what we have to talk about that in the future you know how much degrees you have and stuff what can you do what can you what can you what are your skills that is more important for us so yeah hope it Perfect. answers your question I, think I mean, that... I mean, it's a plus. Sorry, Joe, to say no. it's a plus. You know, if you if you worked before in XP and test driven development, yes, it's easier to get through the assessment. Definitely. I mean, let's don't lie. But um, we we also saw. Um, let's let's talk about that, Oliver. Uh, the faculty uh, seventy three. Volkswagen founded uh, an own kind of university for factory workers or people who work in marketing or stuff to to become software developer. And this is very successful. And we right now in Hanover, we have two people from that uh, fac uh, um, faculty seventy three in our team. Uh, as full stack developer on a senior level and they learned that in two or three years and they are brilliant you know they are really good so um i think not out of 50 people there are 50 wow rocket science uh, software developer in the future but they will find you know their way sometimes in smart production lab or in munich or stuff um but this is important to go we want to go this way we're we're we are not blind we don't think uh, there are so many senior developers that we just have to hire them. You know, we have to take care about education and stuff. And this is what we do. Perfect. I, I think that in terms of questions, I'm not seeing any questions remaining. So if you guys want to talk about anything that you find interesting, we still have time. Any topics that you'd like to discuss, we still have time. I leave that open to you guys. In the middle, maybe I can explain what AutoVision and Volkswagen is and stuff. And this is just why we are here. Uh, that means sometimes the, uh, the hiring process in Volkswagen takes a long time and you, you don't want to waste your time and we don't want to, want to, waste, uh, want to waste our time too. So uh, AutoVision is helping us with a, a very complicated thing in Germany called Arbeitnehmerüberlassung. There's no English word because I don't think there should be an English word for that. In practice, it means you get a contract from AutoVision but you're totally equal with others, you know, in the team. We we don't make any any uh, differences about that. It's just you're a new colleague, you know, and um, this is very important. But it's a great help because with AutoVision, it's like three weeks or four weeks we can hire. And in Volkswagen process, sometimes I mean, my my hiring took eight months, you know, and I was like, okay, it's not happening anymore. But it happens. I'm here. Uh, and this is like, it's a, it's a big corporate. It's normal. You know, we, we, we can, we can cry on this or we can find a workaround about this and the internal recruiting team as well. They do a great job, but it's good to have, you know, alternatives on that. And this is why AutoVision and we are partners and work so closely together in the practice. If you're a new colleague and you can ask our colleagues, it's no difference. I can and it's equal pay. So it's very important. It's equal pay. If you're from outside, from, I don't know, uh, uh, starting with AutoVision and stuff, uh, it's all about the same union and the workers' council and stuff. And equal pay is very important. If you're a woman or man, if you're uh, from ANU, AutoVision and stuff, that makes no no difference. Sorry, Joe. No, no problem. I, I was just going to say that I've been working with AutoVision uh, directly with them and I, it's totally true what you're saying. I just wanted to test that to, to let the people know that everything that you're saying about AutoVision is true. <laughs> it's completely so. And the process normally takes three to four weeks and sometimes it goes sooner. So it depends. We had a question about products and um, I answered that in the chat already, but you know, it's completely different. In all the SDCs at all, we have like 96, 97 products right now. Um, there's a company called Car Software Arc right now and Volkswagen founded this company for um, all the stuff what is in the car in the future, you know, the car as a software development, uh, a software device. Um, this, we work together with them, we are partners, everything is good, but um, it's also important for us to have a look into the company and one of the 
most thrilling things we develop right now in Berlin with Amazon together and in Dresden is the digital production platform to bring all the plants together and to to know what the robotic is is doing and what what is uh, what is helping uh, or, or what the data is helping us to to make a better connection to all the pl plants and to all the process and stuff. This is one kind we are working on in the digital lab. We have founded uh, the identity kit, a cluster for easy login, consent management profile to make you know the experience for our customers and and clients and users better in the future. So it's completely different what we do. But one thing is clear, it makes all sense. We never develop stuff what makes no sense. Then we say no, and we're allowed to say no to the department to say, no, that makes no sense. We found it out. We make a discovery and framing phase and we find it out. And um, our, our strategy in the future is to develop more own products in the STCs our innovations we have innovation fridays where you can you can go crazy and, and and think about new stuff we have programs in volkswagen like the innovation fund where you can uh, you can you can uh, place your idea and you get founded and stuff so to be honest volkswagen is a very good employer to this um, for innovation and 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 uh, i was wonder uh, when i started uh, in volkswagen that all of this is happening. All of this is possible. And yeah, now I'm very proud that um, that people are taking the challenge and uh, the chance to do that. Perfect. Thank you so much, Oliver, for all your sharing. I don't know if you guys want to share anything else. Oliver? One, maybe one last hint from my side. You see maybe on that last slide like this little QR code. So if you are interested in applying for some position in Germany, then please scan feel free to scan this qr code it will uh, bring you to the to the email address that you see also underneath it and you can directly reach out to our colleagues from autovision and you can discuss with them what potential jobs we have in in all locations that were introduced earlier by ola and they will be happy to to help you further um, Anna, I don't, I don't know uh, if you're, if you're here. Um, there's a question about Barcelona. Uh, there is a Seat Code. It's a software development center directly for Seat. I am pretty sure they have open positions. But just, uh, um, just ask the uh, uh, the team from Autovision about that. They will know definitely. Thank you. Thank you guys for the amazing session. Um, thank you, Oliver. Thank you, Ole. Thank you, Michael. That's thank Thank you, Anna, for, for being in the background, for joining us and sharing this talk with us today. It, it was a pleasure to hear from you as always. And for all you people in the audience, you can check Volkswagen AG Group IT, both on the menu arena on your left. Oliver will be around on one of the tables to speak to you, if you're interested, of course. He will be available from 1 to 3 p.m. GMT. We will now go on a break of two hours for lunch, and we'll be back with our JavaScript keynote at 2 p.m. GMT. See you there. And once again, thank you guys for the amazing session. Thank you. Bye -bye.